anyone online yet? Not yet. We got one. We got one. Hopefully Linda is here. Well, welcome everybody. We're going to get started and today's Facebook Live is all about the beat. Right? <laughs> What's that song go? It's all about the beat. About the beat. About the beat. Anyway, so I get a lot of questions regarding how do you roast a beet? And I, you can buy the beets already roasted. You can buy them at Costco and you can buy it at Trader Joe's, but I don't like any of those because it's, honestly, they're super, super easy to roast yourself. So here I have, and these tiny little ones work the best. They're, they're so good. This is a, um, this is the golden beet. It's absolutely delicious. This is the regular red beet. And all we're gonna do, so let me tell you about how I set this up. So you've got your aluminum pan all set up here. Then you're gonna take another aluminum and put it on the bottom. Then you're gonna take your parchment paper and you're gonna put that in the middle because you never want your... Because you have two aluminums. Right. Okay. Because. You, we're going to make this like into a little diaper type of thing. Okay. You, you don't want the aluminum to hit your food. So we're going to take all this and we're going to put it right here in the middle. Okay. Okay. Kenny's on here. Hi, Kenny. Hey. Um, I need to get some ice. So hold on. Talk yeah. to them a little bit. Shelly says, hi, Shada. Rose says, hello. Sherry says, hi, Shada June. Linda says, hi. Hi, everyone. You guys all hear us? Hopefully, if you're watching. So Shada's making an ice bath over there. Is that what that is? Yes. Look how pretty these beets are. I love the color. Right? Where did you get these beautiful beets? Um, at Whole Foods. My mom went shopping. My sous chef mom <laughs> went shopping. <laughs> so once you've got... Um, once you've got everything in here, then you're going to take a few ice cubes and you're just going to put it in the middle. And you are, you're creating that steam in here. And then you're going to close this up. And again, like I said, you don't want the aluminum to hit the food. Then you're going to take this and wrap it up really, really good. And now, this is ready to go in the oven. Now, how hard was this to roast your beets? Not hard at all, right? And um, I'll show you, this is the finished product. Oh, and so you actually roasted these ones. I actually roasted these because I was thinking about this. So we're gonna make a few recipes here today. So okay. we're gonna actually make hummus out of these roasted beets that we have here. So then we're gonna take this and put it in our oven. Okay. You're gonna put it at 410. And because these are small, this, it might cook quicker. So they take about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Just check them, but just make sure you've got gloves on when you're opening this because the heat will come off okay. um, and it's going to be hot. So we're going to put this, the oven's coming up to temperature. It's not there yet. And we're going to put that in there. We're going to set the time for about an hour. Mm. And that's that. <laughs> So any nice. questions so far on how to roast the beet? So Sherry said she had beets with her supper and she loves them. I love beets and they're so good for us. They're full of vitamins and nutrients and they're just heart healthy. Um, I try to eat beets every single day as much as I can. So whether it's the golden or the red, but I just absolutely love it. But I ref I'm a snob. I'm not going to go buy it. Um, at the markets and stuff already roasted because it's so easy to do and the taste is just unbelievable mm. so so after i roast beets how long can i keep them in the fridge um, if they we, last that long yeah it, well first of all they don't last that long because they're small so you probably are going to eat about two or three of those at one sitting um so we keep them for probably about, an, about a day i mean they're, they don't i mean uh, a week what am i talking oh. about a day a, a week uh, we but they might know. not last a day. <laughs> yeah, they, they're definitely not lasting a day, but they're probably, I'd say, about... But if you made a week. bunch of beets and batch cooked them, you could have them for a week. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So CJ said, hi, Shada. I just got on. Can't wait to see what you were doing. I love beets. Yeah, it's all about the beets today, guys. <laughs> it's all about the beets. The She's beautiful got beets. the beets. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is a beet salad. Now, most of you guys know this recipe. It's the bodacious beet salad that AJ does. 
the way that that recipe came about is I went to a wedding and I walked out to see what was what they were serving at dinner. Okay, so Persian weddings, let me tell you a little bit about those. Decline. Yeah, decline. <laughs> so, um, so the wedding, the, the dinner did not start till like 11 o'clock at night, right? And so I, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to eat, but I am going to go check out what they had. So they had this beautiful mango and beet salad. And the mango was just brilliant color. Like the, the color was just unbelievable against the red. And, and I asked them, I'm like, is there oil in there? And they're like, well, of course there's oil. You can't do it because what I noticed that the beet wasn't bleeding. Like, you mm. know how typically, like, once we start mixing this, you're gonna see it bleed a little bit. It's gonna bleed onto the mango, like the red. Mm -hmm. But theirs wasn't doing it. So there was oil and all sorts of other things. So I called AJ the next day and I'm like, okay, we gotta do something because this, this recipe is just unbelievable. So then I decided that I'm, my version of it was going to be just beets and mangoes, cilantro, and uh, lime juice. I wanted it something just fresh and you know something light lightweight so okay. AJ took it and she added fresh mint and she added her um, knock your socks off salad dressing and I want to know if I think she added onions to it a few other things which is mm. fine I mean you know but a lot of people love that salad but for me personally that salad is just way too sweet now what I did do for this salad, the beet salad, these, these uh, beets, I steamed them. You guys mm -hmm. all know my other favorite new, new thing is that, that steamer basket that I have and I, and I literally use that all the time. So this, these beets, you could do it roasted or you could do it steamed. So I decided for this recipe, I want to do it steamed. Here's my cubed um, mangoes and you can see that I try to keep them about the same size mm -hmm. that's just my anal virgo self <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to do any of that and we've got some uh, chopped up cilantro to put on top of that we've got our lime juice but i've also had it um with simply lemon balsamic mm. so i personally would you if you're going to use the balsamic i would go with a light color like the white balsamic so it don't, doesn't affect the color of the... Right, because salad. I think when you're using the darker balsamics, it affects it, then everything becomes muddy. Like, I want to see the beautiful colors of the mango. I want to see the beautiful colors of the beet. I want to see the green. Mm -hmm. You, you want to see that. And when you use the dark balsamic, you're not going to see it. But if you use the lighter, you are going to see it. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to add our beets. Something happened in the oven. And then... Beets are getting excited. Huh? So the beets are getting excited. The beets are getting excited. Trish says, I love beets, especially the golden beets. Kenny says, beat it. Exactly. <laughs> Victor says, hi, Shada. Grab a salad and beat it. <laughs> so look, you can still... You see, that the, you see that the beets are bleeding a little bit? Mm -hmm. But it's not that bad. Mm -mm. It's not that bad. You can still see the colors mm -hmm. in there, right? And that's cilantro? That's cilantro. And what we're going to add, like I said, you could eat. Well, I'm going to leave it up to you. You decide. Do you mm. want to try Simply Lemon Balsamic or do you want to try it with a lime? Do I want to try the original or the new version? The new version. <laughs> we're going to leave That's it up to uh, we're going to leave it up to Aaron. Well, I have had the original version, so let's try the new version. How the about that? Version. Okay, so we'll try it with the balsamic. <laughs> so we're going to if you guys these balsamics are fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a Simply Lemon Balsamic by California Balsamic. And if you put in my name, Shada, when you go to checkout, you can put in, you can also get two free samples of any balsamics you like. I encourage you guys to try these balsamics because they really are a game. Whoa, I forgot that this doesn't have a <laughs> lid. But anyway, it's all good. There we go. Okay, so we got that. So uh, Sandra wanted to know how long does it take the beets to be in the steamer? You know, it depends on the size of your beets. And um, these, because they were small, they probably took about 40 minutes. Um, I want to say 40, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm going to add the rest of these mangoes in here just because we can. Why not? Why not, right? But 
don't you love that you can somewhat see the colors through? Mm -hmm. I just it's very think it's, pretty. It's very pretty. And you, you just add enough cilantro to add, make it just look pretty. Yeah. Yeah, I like the cilantro. Right? I love cilantro, though. Yeah, but you know, do you know that there's people that don't like my cilantro? Mom, my mom is one of them. She does That's not like... such a shame. They, they think it, it tastes like soapy. soapy right? yeah. She does not like cilantro. But I will put it on everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I love I love cilantro. So do you want to taste a little bit, or let's Let's, let's, let's go through the recipes and then I'm gonna have you taste. Okay. Because the next thing I want to do is we are going to make beet hummus. Ooh. Have you had beet hummus? I have not had beet hummus. Okay, so we're gonna try it. Now these beets, the beets that I'm gonna be using, these were roasted this morning. In the oven. So roasted beets so for the hummus. For the, yeah, we're going to do it with roasted. You can actually make um, beet hummus using raw raw beets. I'm just going to cut these in half just because it will make it easier. So Sherry says, simply lemon is so good on many things. You that said it, true. sister. It's so true. So so we, look at all those. Yeah, we're going to put that in. These are the chick beets that I made in the Instant Pot today. Mm. We've got cannellini beans because I don't add the tahini. I'm going to take about a third of a cup of the um, the water from the garbanzo beans, but it's the water, I guess you call it the aquafaba. And then we're going to add, oh, can't forget the garlic. You almost let me forget the garlic. <laughs> Never wanna, forget the garlic. Never forget the garlic. So we're gonna try a little bit of lemon juice, lime juice. We're gonna start out with a little and then we can always add more. Okay, you're gonna ask me how much I put in, but this this is about a third of a cup. Um, and I didn't and I, and, I, and I didn't fill it up though. So yeah. we're so gonna add less. Is it, yeah, just a little less. Okay, um, how much cumin should we put in? About a teaspoon? Yeah, that sounds about right. If we, a good teaspoon. How's that? Okay. And then we can, we can always add more, you guys. We can always add more. And then we're going to add roasted ground coriander. Okay. Whenever you can get your, uh, your, um, your spice roasted, do it. Oh, my God. It smells good. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit of coriander in here. And now we're going to blend this up. I love this hummus because the color is just, oh, so beautiful. Says it's genetic. So 
TL says it's genetic. Cilantro tastes very strange to some of us. So genetics. So I must like cilantro from my father's side. <laughs> Probably closer to a tablespoon? No, probably about one and a half teaspoon. teaspoon. Okay. Honestly, it's whatever you like. Because I love cumin, so I could keep adding it, but there's people that might hate cumin, or they might want it more lemony. There's no right or wrong, because you're going to be eating it, and as long as you like it, that's all that matters. And it just gives it a smoky flavor, right? Yeah. make a lipstick out of that. Huh? So you could make a lipstick out of that. <laughs> I think it would be great like to have in your like a center cook the tank plate and then have all your beautiful vegetables around it yeah. and then have this beautiful pink hummus. I mean it's gorgeous. Yeah. That color truly is beautiful. Sherry says, my dad was Chinese and I was raised with a lot of cilantro. Jamie says, yum. Sandra said, I didn't hear what she said. What did she put in it before the coriander? Cumin. Or the cumin? Okay. Yeah, Shelly said it was the cumin. CJ said, am I the only one who lost sound? Must have been just me. I logged out and tried to log in and now it sounds fine. Okay. That's good to hear, CJ. Okay, I'm gonna have Aaron give me here. I'll give you a clean spoon. Taste it. Look at that, you guys. Mmm. I like this one. Oh my god, it's turned out mm. so good. Yeah. Okay, so here's here's something. That's a good one. It's, and it's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. So here's a little trick, guys. Try to put in your own aquafab water into the hummus that's one two if you're if your um garbanzo beans when you cook them if they're still a little bit warm that's the best time to make your hummus oh. and then let it run for at least a minimum of three minutes you see how it's not grainy at all mm -mm. like it's pretty darn smooth like yeah. you could let it run you, you might want to take a picture of it you want to mix a spoon around in there so they can see Look at that. That's pretty darn smooth, you guys. Yeah. I mean, I could run it a little bit longer. It's like creamy. But I think we're good. I don't think it because no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't taste gritty at all. Um, the flavors are good, and it's fun to eat because it's so pink and vibrant. <laughs> right. I, I just think it's. I just think it's gorgeous, and and you know we eat with our eyes, so we might as mm. well make our food look beautiful. And our food is beautiful, actually. So let's put this in so here. Linda says, I love beets and I love hummus, but I've never had beet hummus before. I'm definitely going to make this. Okay, I am so glad. But I'm telling you guys, if you don't make your own, if you don't roast your own beets or you don't do your own garbanzo and it comes straight from the can, the flavor profile will be a little bit different. I never liked garbanzo beans until I started making my own. Pretty. And now I can't stop eating them. This would be great for the holidays. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. It's so pretty. <laughs> it almost looks like um, you added food dye or something because it's so bright. I added what to it? Food dye or something. Like it doesn't look um, oh, no. real, you know? Oh, no. But it is beautiful. Pretty that is. See if it was back in the Middle East, they would add a little bit of olive oil. <laughs> they would add some, can you know, garbanzo beans to it. 
But honest to God, guys, you can make your own hummus and look how gorgeous and beautiful that is. That, yeah. that should be part of your centerpiece. I like that. Now, let's have Miss Erin try some of this salad. Okay, look at this, you guys. I'm waiting for Erin for one of these days to say she doesn't like something. God, I hope not. Mm. Did you try it? I'm going to try it right now. Mmm. It's good with the lemon. Mm -hmm. I know. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm. Sorry, my mouth is full, but that is really good. Yeah, I could eat that every day. So, do we have any other questions regarding beets? Don't be afraid of them. Make them. Try them in your salads. Make hummus out of it. This was super easy. How long did this take? Two minutes? Mm -hmm. Well, no, three minutes because I wanted to be running for three minutes. Um, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. So here's a question. Um, <laughs> My mom's going to the fridge. She says, "Don't, don't, don't show me." Uh, Why you grab me? There's nothing bad in the house that you no, know. No, but you what? can show. How much we make? Oh, days. yeah, lots of go for three days, maybe four days. Yeah, let me show so you. Guys you guys got lots. All of this was roasted oh, wow. this morning. Wow, and they've got are those gold ones? There? These are the gold ones. So then, because so they turn a little, or is it just because they were sitting well, on because top? because they're when they're sitting together and you put the mm. ice cube and you're creating that ice bath, so the steam and everything, so all the the, the liquid from the beets. It's going to add color to that. But when you slice it, oh my God, it's beautiful. It looks like a rainbow of colors in there. So um, what, how do you, because I know beets are hard to handle because they, you like know, they change your hands? Yeah, so how okay, do you look, do it my without? Hands. My hands are staying. But guys, it's only, it's only for one day and it goes away. Well, and if you really don't want it, gloves. Gloves. Gloves are going to become Do you chop it on top of a towel? So no, I chop it up on the, on the plastic cutting board. Oh, okay. The, and you just oh, wash my it off. wood cutting board, or actually, I grab a plate and I'll chop it up on the plate because the plate's really easy to wash, and I just wash it. It's go. not, it's not that difficult. But I'll take this any day over store bought. Oh no, this is wonderful. Store bought. Do you buy? Do you typically buy your beets? I buy them from um, Trader Joe's. Has the pre one, the pre steamed ones. Shade doesn't matter right now. <laughs> I'm not. No, bad. don't do that. No, because so, because you. But really... they taste a, those taste a lot better. Okay. Yeah, right? And I've never really been a fan of canned. Oh God. No. Beans or no. not beans, uh, beets. So no, 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 no yeah. No. So fresh is just. And it wasn't hard to do. But I have been. If I use beets, I've had been just doing it raw. I raw. Think. I love raw beets. You either do them raw or you do them roasted, and you do it yourself because it's the the flavor is just. And you Way do different. a lot. Like, look, you guys, we made a lot of this. Yeah. You do a lot. You don't just, you don't just do it, it for one, for one beat. Beats. That's a lot of beats. But yeah. between me and my mom, we can finish this within five days. Mm -hmm. That's not going to last more than that, you know? And they're so good for you, too. They're extremely nutritious, extremely mm -hmm. good for you. But I'm excited to, for you to make your, um, to make beet hummus. And for the rest of yeah. you, if for that matter, I can't wait to start seeing some posts about all these beautiful different colored beets. Yeah. Cherry says, I have always grown and canned my own beets. Have not tried the golden ones yet. Try the golden yeah. ones. The golden ones are, okay, so the red ones are a little bit more sweet than the golden ones, but they're absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. And even the golden ones, the only reason I don't put the golden ones in this salad is because they're too close in color to the mango, yeah. so they're gonna get lost. And mm -hmm. the whole idea is for you to be able to see the mango and the beets. And that's why I say go with a lighter, like a white balsamic vinegar or the, the lemon or just lime juice because you want to be able to somewhat see the color differentiation. When you use a dark uh, balsamic, it all turns to mush. Like it's all like that muddy color. It's not, mm -hmm. this to me is more visually appealing. Yeah, I like it. And it's not as sweet. So pretty. Huh? So pretty. And you can take both of these with the holidays coming up, you guys. You can take these to any um, holiday event that you're going to be having, to any potlucks that you're going to be having. So, mm -hmm. anything else? Anybody else have any questions? Start eating your beets. <laughs>
don't think so. I will say that's my mom's favorite recipe. She loves that salad. Yeah, no, it's they're they're really good. Um, I hope you guys are um, you know about the class the upcoming classes that we're having. October sixth, we're having a tamales class. Um, November 9th, uh, my dear friend uh, Mauricio, Chef Mauricio from True North will be here. So we're going to do a holiday themed cooking class here. Uh, John Pierre and I are also teaching October 20th, I believe, how to navigate through the holidays. That'll be in the LA area. So I hope that you guys will join us. And if you see any products that I'm using or anything, typically you can go on my healthy cooking page and I have my Amazon affiliate, um, my favorite things. And you can go look on there if you like. And what else, Miss Erin? What else am I leaving out? <laughs> She's looking at me like, I don't know. But um, So where, where are your classes? There are. So um, the October 6th class will be in Los Angeles in Valley Glen. The October 20th class will be in Valley Glen in Los Angeles by Sherman Oaks. The November 9th class will be here in Yorba Linda in Orange County. And that's going to be themed, like I said, we're, gonna, we're theming it um, towards, uh, what do you call it, the holiday season. In fact, um, you guys might have seen the truffles that I'm, that, in fact, I'm going to have Aaron try one of those truffles. because. I, I'm, teach, I'm going to be teaching a class in El Segundo, and for them, I, need to create, I needed to create a higher calorie-dense um, dessert. So I made these truffles. They're still not perfected to me. Uh, there's a few things that I still need to add to it. And I'm going to have Erin try one tonight and get her thoughts on it, because I'm probably going to make about 100 of those, which that's going to be yeah. a chore in itself, but it should <laughs> be fun. But yeah, those are some of the things that are coming up. And I'll be at True North. If, any, if anybody's going to True North for the holiday season, I'll be there starting December 12th till uh, January 2nd. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys. Yeah. And Kenny wants to know, when can we eat? <laughs> Kenny, you need to be here, my friend. Come on over, Kenny. If, if you were here, I'd feed you right now, Kenny June. And then Susanna just said, hi, Shada. You look so good. Wonderful oh, food. You. Tell your mom I say hi, and I love thank you. Thank you. We love you too, honey. Thank you. So that's about it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of All About Beets. I hope that you guys are going to start incorporating it more into your daily life and start enjoying and, and playing with the recipes. And I look forward to seeing some, some of you posting what you're going to be doing with the beets. And if there's no further questions, I'm going to bid you guys a farewell and uh, hope you have a happy, healthy week ahead. Take care. Bye.